Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, uh, we will learn how to fit power laws, which is another very important type of nonlinear curve, uh, using the same trick we've been using throughout the course, which is linear least squares. Now, as a motivating example, I'm going to ask you to look at the data in this picture right here, this upper left panel. Uh, what you're seeing here is a data set on 62 mammals, so 62 different critters here, all the way from the lesser short-tailed shrew to the African elephant. And what we're looking at is those species' body weight, measured in kilograms, as a predictor of their brain weight, measured in grams. And obviously there's a positive relationship. Uh, it's sort of hard to tell how good this straight line is fitting the data, and the reason is that all of the mammals are kind of scrunched in this tiny little red rectangle over here in the bottom left of the plot. And what I want to show you here uh, is what happens when we take the logarithm of both variables here, that is log brain weight versus log body weight. And something almost magical happens, which is that this tiny rectangle right here gets stretched out or unscrunched or expanded to this rectangle right here, and all of a sudden we can resolve all of these little dots right here that we weren't able to see individually on the original scale. This is now the log brain weight versus log body weight scale. And this is a beautiful picture right here. So if you just ignore that box to give you a sense of where that's coming from right there, that's exactly the kind of thing that you'd be very, very happy to fit a straight line to using linear least squares. And what's happening here is that the logarithm uh, as a mathematical operation is sort of unscrunching things. And to dramatize that, let me just show you the before and after picture of body weight. Here's the original histogram of the body weight variable. And you see something very characteristic here which is most of the data points scrunched up right here against the left boundary of zero. You can't have negative body weight. But most of the animals are, are, despite the fact that most of the animals are very small here, there is this long, long right tail with a few uh, members in it here. You know, here's the Asian elephant, here's the African elephant right here. Uh, and this is a, a really ugly kind of skewed distribution. Here's the after picture when I take the logarithm of body weight. Again, it's natural logarithm here. Uh, it's a much, much prettier histogram, something that looks nice and, and almost like a normal distribution centered around its mean. So that, that logarithm really is sort of undone this scrunchiness that we have at the left-hand side of this plot. And, and this is giving you a sense of what it's appropriate for. It's, it's great when you've got data points that span many, many orders of magnitude. Uh, and you'll see the same thing if we look at the histogram before and after of brain weight. Here's the original data, again, scrunched up here against the left boundary of zero and this long right tail. Once we take the logarithm of brain weight, it's a nice, pretty histogram. And that's reflected in the fact that it's something that we could easily fit a straight line to by least squares on the log log scale. <clears throat> so what's going on here? Is the logarithmic transformation just something that we do in order to, to try it out and see if we can fit a straight line? Uh, well, uh, yes and no. Uh, you know, the more satisfying answer is that what we're really doing here is fitting what's called a power law. Okay? And, and so a power law is this other very general, very important class of mathematical equations that relates to variables. And here it is. <clears throat> y is our response, in this case, brain weight. X is our predictor, in this case, body weight. Alpha is just some multiplicative constant. And beta is the power. Uh, and you know this is different from the exponential growth curve that we've seen before. Before, we had E as the base and X as the power. Here we've got x as the base and beta 1 as the power. Okay, so it's, it's flipping the role of where x is in the exponent. <clears throat> and this is the kind of curve that we're actually fitting when we take the logarithm of both variables, log y and log x, and fit a straight line to those two. And if we want to see why that works, we need a little bit of algebra. Uh, and again, what we'll do is start with this equation right here and take the logarithm of both sides to preserve equality. And if we do that, this is what we get, log y equals log of that whole thing on the right-hand side. Applying the fact that the log of the product is the sum of the logs, we get this right here, log alpha plus log quantity x to the beta 1. And then applying the law that if we have log of something to a power, we can take that power out in front of the logarithm as a multiplicative constant. And so what we end up with after simplifying is log alpha plus beta 1 times log x. And this is a great equation because this is linear now. It's not linear in y versus x, but it's linear in new variables. It's linear in log y as a response versus log x. Because look, here's log x, here's the, inter the slope, and here's the intercept. That's just a straight line. 
So if y and x follow a power law relationship, then log y and log x will follow a linear relationship, and the intercept of that linear relationship is going to be log alpha, and the slope is going to be beta, the power uh, in the power law. Uh, so that implies that we can fit the parameters of the power law just by taking the log of both sides, as we did in this picture, and using ordinary least squares to fit our equation. And if you do that, <clears throat> this is exactly the equation you get up at the top of your screen right here. Log brain equals 2.13 times 0 0.75 times log body, and that would describe <clears throat> the straight line fit right here. In fact, we can scroll on to the next page and see exactly where that's coming from. Here's the straight line. Here's the residual plot. Everything looks nice and pretty. And here is our fitted equation on the original scale. And if you want to know where this fitted equation on the original scale comes from, you need a little bit of algebra. So let's go back. Again, our fitted equation for log brain versus log body was this. And if we see what we're doing, the, the intercept is log alpha, that's 2.13, and the slope is beta 1. So it's easy. We know that beta 1, the power up here, is just the slope of whatever equation we fit, in this case 0 0.75. <clears throat> now what about alpha? That's the constant in our power law. Well, the intercept that we get from the regression model is actually log of alpha. Okay, so log of alpha is equal to 2.13. If you want to solve that out, what do you have here? Log alpha equals 2.13. So taking e to both sides, e to the log alpha is e to the 2.13. And e and log are inverse operations of each other, so they cancel each other out. And we're just left with alpha is e to the 2.13, and that's about 8.4. And so what that tells us is that our fitted equation must be on the original scale alpha times x to the beta 1, and that's 8.4 times body to the 0 0.75, right there. Now, uh, a really interesting and important question is, what do the residuals say in a power law? Okay, uh, you know, we can fit the power law using ordinary least squares, and uh, you know, in doing so, we've ignored the residuals so far. Uh, if we keep track of those residuals a bit more carefully, what we're actually fitting is this, right? We've got log y equals log alpha plus beta 1 times log x, and now we have an additive residual on a log scale. Uh, and so if we now do exactly the same thing that we did before, try to go back to the original scale by exponentiating both sides of this equation right here, but doing so, in doing so, we keep track of this residual, this is what we get. We get e to the left-hand side is just e to the log y, and e to the right-hand side is all of this. Okay? Uh, because again, it, this is just using the product, the uh, properties rather of the exponential function, that the exponent of the sum is the product of the exponents right here. <clears throat> so if we simplify all these things, e and log cancel each other out, so we're left with y. e and log cancel each other out, so we're left with beta. This right here simplifies to x to the power beta 1. That's our original power law. And then we're left with the exponentiated residual right here. Okay, and so what this is telling you is that the residuals, because they are additive on the log-log scale, turn out to be multiplicative on the original y versus x scale, the brain weight versus body weight scale. And those exponentiated residuals are telling us the relative or percentage error made by the model on the original scale. So let's actually work through a couple of examples right here. Okay, so let's just take the case of residual EI equals 0 0.2 on the log-log scale. Okay, so if that is what you had, then the actual response, right, if we just took uh, the actual response right here equals fitted response times e to the 0 0.2. Well, e to the 0 0.2 is about 1.22. So that tells us that this thing right here is the fitted value times 1.22. In other words, this was 1.22 times smaller than that. Uh, and that's telling us that we underestimated this particular yi by about 22% because the real thing was 1.22 times what we expected it to be. All right, let's try another example. If EI is minus 0 0.1, so a negative residual, that's on the log-log scale, uh, then uh, what is E to the minus 0 0.1 at 0 0.9? Okay, uh, so if we go back up here, that says that the actual thing, YI, is the fitted value times 0 0.9, uh, which means that uh, we overestimated, right? So because the actual thing is 90% or 0.9 of what we expected it to be. So that means that we overestimated that particular y by about 10%. Uh, and so the, the key thing to realize here is that uh, the 
absolute magnitude of the error that you're making depends on how big the y variable itself is. Uh, and that's the, exactly the kind of error structure that makes sense for the body weight brain weight data. You know, it's, it's an error in percentage terms that we want to be keeping track of. If you make a 10% error for the smallest animal in the data set, the shrew, you know, will be off by one gram. If you make a 10% error for the African elephant, you'll be off by 60 kilograms. Okay, so, uh, you know, again, the, the simple mantra here is bigger critters mean bigger errors, but those are bigger errors only in an absolute sense. And, and what this is telling you in a power law, the way we're measuring error is not in an absolute sense. We're measuring error in percentage terms, exponentiated residuals, uh, relative to the original body weight. Finally, one more question is, how do we interpret the slope under a log-log or a double-log transformation? Uh, and this is an advanced topic, uh, but something that's well within your capabilities here. To do it, what we need is some calculus, all right? Uh, and, and to do this, what we'll do is take the derivative of our original equation. Okay, so our original equation, if we scroll all the way back up here, what was our original equation? All the way back to the beginning. It was this, y equals alpha times x to the beta 1. So if you use your basic rules for calculus and I take dy dx, uh, this is you know, just a power of x, and powers of x are something that are quite easy to take derivatives of. Here we are, dy dx equals now beta 1 times alpha times x, and what do I do? I, I just bring the power down in front and I subtract 1 from the power when I take the derivative. Very, very simple. So just here's a simple way to rewrite this. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation right here, and if you imagine multiplying it by x over x, and all you're doing there is multiplying it by 1, so that doesn't change the value of that right-hand side of the equation, but if I multiply it by x over x, this is what I get. I get beta 1 times a uh, alpha to the x to the beta 1 divided by x. And what do you notice about this numerator right here? Well, beta 1 alpha times x to the beta 1, that's beta 1 times y right there, because our original equation said that y was alpha times x to the beta 1. <clears throat> and so we get dy dx equals beta 1 times y over x. And if we just solve that expression for beta 1, this is what we get. We get in the numerator dy over y, and in the numerator dx over x. And let's remember what dy and dx are. They are change, right? So in the numerator here, we have change in y divided by y, and in the numerator, we have change in x divided by x. So instead of absolute change, dy over dx, this is telling us that beta 1 in a power law model is relative change, relative change in y divided by relative change in x. So let's interpret this. If we had a beta 1 of 0 0.75, which is exactly what we had in the fitted body weight versus brain weight data, that means that when I have a 100% change, like a doubling in body weight, that's in the numerator, I change 100% down here, uh, then what do I get? I get a, a change of 0.75 in the numerator, right? Because this is the beta 1 equals 0.75 divided by 1, because beta 1 is 0.75. So 100% change, a doubling in body weight, is associated with a 75% change uh, in brain weight. Okay, and so the idea is, you know, the bigger you are, the smaller your brain gets, at least relatively speaking, because it's changing at a rate that's slower than uh, y over x. Now these kinds of power laws, I'll close with the, the recognition that these kinds of power laws are very important in economics, uh, and they are used there ubiquitously as models for consumer demand. Okay, so here uh, the response and the, and the predictor here, the predictor is price, p, and the response is q, quantity demanded, and a very common model in microeconomics would say that quantity demanded is a power law relationship with price. So Q equals alpha times price to the beta 1. And in this context, economists would often call this relative change coefficient, this beta 1, the price elasticity of demand. So what happens when price doubles? How much does consumer demand go down by? So there, beta 1 is always going to be negative. The question is just how much does the, uh, the quantity demanded by consumers change as a function of price in relative terms? So very, very popular and very important kind of equation to be able to fit if you're interested in working with market data.